Get off your phone. Oh, here he is. <laughs> Always on the phone. There you go. How are you, mate? Good. Good there. I've got you some stuff. Thank I you. thought, look, you know, I'm no uh, Steve Cook, but I'll, <laughs> I'll bring you some things while I have the chance. Because a lot of things are happening up here at the moment. I thought, well, I'm in the area. I'm just going to drop in and say good day. Mm. You know, before, uh, well, during. And then I'll, I'll come and see you again after because I'm sure I'm going to be able to steal some. Yeah. Steal some stuff from the arm for you as well. Yeah, that'd be great. It's hard to even grab, <laughs> grab stuff at the moment because everything is all boxed up going to the expo. Mm. Okay, I mean, I was rather, rather puffy, like I still am quite puffy, but they call it moon face where it actually just blows up. You just look like you've had a big night. Mm. <laughs> you look like you got a few puffs under the eye. Hey! Hello, James. Hey! Hello, Hey! How you doing? <laughs> Good. <laughs> Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. You're all kitted out. I am, I am. Jim Shark, how are you feeling today? Jim Shark, yes. <laughs> Good timing. <laughs> hey mate, hi Sean. Nice to meet you, Sean. Nice to meet you. Big day tomorrow. It is, it big is. Big day tomorrow. And for you guys over the weekend as well. Not as big of a day for yeah. us, but you're, you're going to hurt a bone marrow transplant tomorrow. Correct. Be crazy. Yeah. How are you feeling today? Uh, today's been probably the roughest day so far, but I've improved since the morning. And we're here just getting it done still, so. You're the man. Yeah. That's inspirational. I, my good friends, um, their best friend, his daughter, went through the same thing you're going through, man. And I just watched, watched what they went through so I can sympathize. And you're, uh, that's, that's what's inspirational, my, my friend. Well. So. Yeah, I got, got you some Optimum stuff. Is that your robe? Yeah. He's a gangster. <laughs> <laughs> Check, yeah. out, check out the photos of him up here when he. Uh, here we are. Yeah. Whoa, check it out, shredded. Man. <laughs> oh, let's go check that out. That's cool, huh? It's very cool. Yeah, check this out. There you go, James. Now you have to put this on. Oh. <laughs> Jim Shark's gonna love you, though. Yeah. 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 So surgery's tomorrow. Hmm. Well, it's never. It's actually not in the trans surgery. Oh, it's it, it just comes through my chest port up up here. Oh, it does. Um. I was explaining to Paul before how it works, but essentially, just the chemo's killed off my bone marrow, so. The blood stem cells that I'm receiving find their way to the bone marrow and start making their own blood. Gotcha. So it's. Mm. So when uh, when when will they? Come? When should you start feeling better, mate? Right? Um, it's all theoretical how long it takes. Um, but yeah, it's usually about a month from nice. the start of it all. Nice. Very mm. nice, mate. Right? This is Chandler, by the way. I don't think we introduced Chandler. Nice to meet you, man. Chandler takes care of the camera with Renee. Oh, you've never... Yeah. No, I, oh, I'm yeah. friends with James on Facebook, and I yeah. always like his posts. She talks about... Yeah, yeah, talk yeah, about we, talk, we talk about your posts, and I thought you... you guys are, are you on Snap and stuff? Yeah. Do you mind if we Snap? Yeah, go. Get yeah. a little Snap here and get a little video, a little Soldier Nation action. It's all um, boxing. Bodybuilding. Yeah, mainly. <laughs> I used to play, like, soccer and cricket, but now mainly physique building and bodybuilding. Yeah, sort of you a Kai Green fan? Yeah, yeah. Bro, he looks freaky at the Arnold. Mm. He was so dry compared to everyone. It was just like, if he, if he shows up like that for the Olympia, I, I don't know how they're not yeah. gonna get yeah. to You wanna go by Jimmy or James? What, what do you go by on, on like Snapchat? James. James, all right. What's up guys? We're here seeing James rocking the Gymshark kit, looking good. Make sure you guys give this guy a follow. Tell him good luck for tomorrow, bone marrow transplant been posting about trying to raise awareness and educate people about what's actually happening with me and hopefully make sure some people do the right things to make sure all this sort of stuff doesn't happen to them. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And mum, mum's obviously holding up my, my camera there. Yeah, I'm right. getting it. Because I've started <laughs> my own YouTube stuff. Which, Have you? Which yesterday... You got to. It's such a powerful thing for people to... I mean, so many people will gain just motivation and inspiration like you see something like this and it kind of puts it all into perspective mm. and it's just like you know if you're doing if you're going what you're going through people at home watching you're like man I should probably get off the couch and and do <laughs> do what I want to or should be doing type of thing yeah and that's um I never expected anything to like the social media side to connect so so well and yeah. get quite a following so far um but yeah, I can see it helps people and and motivates them to do the, do good stuff with their own lives, so especially yeah. like with myself promoting uh, blood donation and 
joints mm. and bone marrow registry, that sort of stuff. So, mm. Paul and my mum have done a good job of um, hiding your arrival. <laughs> <laughs> It did good. That did good. She said she felt like Pinocchio. Her nose is getting longer and longer. Though. And, note, and, and she'll tell you that this was actually organised before you reached out. Before. Yeah. Before. Yeah. Man, you get... You I get. actually, uh, I didn't even heard from... I just thought... Um, I spoke to Renee about it. And I said, how do we do it? Now I want to... Um, I've got to find what... It, so I messaged your brother. I messaged your mum. And I <laughs> said, like, what, this is what I want to do. How can we do it? And uh, your brother, uh, your mum was first. He's like, yeah, yeah, let's go, let's go. Your brother's like, is everything cool? Can is there anything I can do? No, your mum's all over it. It's all sorted. So, uh, so and, then, and then he reached out and said, oh, how are you going? Is anything going? And I'm thinking, we're all over this. Now, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. Actually, let's do an Instagram. Do you want to do a picture or a video Instagram? I reckon. Do you want to go into the, into the lounge? Very full at the moment. It'd be much better in there, to be honest. With the lighting? You think about lighting? <laughs> <laughs> Good call. <laughs> and YouTube's a much easier way to, to show what actually happens here. Yeah. And I'm using my Snapchat as well to um, provide a very large amount of transparency as to what's actually happening. Like the whole topic of cancer is so big in regards to like how like, deadly I guess it can be. Mm. This, um, everyone in the world is kind of just brushing it off as to um, having the mentality of saying that's nothing that happened to me. Yeah. So what do you think there's some things that from people can learn, I guess, from what you're, are you trying to, more preventative stuff or what? I mean, because it's really, it's like, sometimes it seems like it's just, you know, luck of the draw type of a thing. Yeah. A very large amount of cancers can be cured in the early stages. Oh. Um, and the fact that many people wait until it's too late to actually be in an early stage they kind of miss that opportunity to be gotcha. easily cured. And where did you find it when you when they found you were was it in the early stage? Or? Yeah, um, both times been in the early stage because I was a blood donor, which is why I promote that because it's basically like having a free blood test. Right. Um, and one time I went to the blood donation bank and my hemoglobin, which is like the red blood cells, was um, kept on going lower and lower every single time. Ah. So I said go to the doctor, so I did, and. I got another blood test and then the day after I was diagnosed. Really? So if you can just imagine if I didn't ever donate blood. Yeah. Dude, like yeah. last night on Snapchat, I, or maybe the other night, I was saying like how many um, fitness personalities tell you to check the testicles and that sort of stuff. Oh, yeah. And I said, well, there's probably none. Um, and I try and use my media, which isn't obviously to the grand spectrum of like a, a famous person, um, but you still use it. Any awareness is good awareness, you know? Good you. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's true. I think people are more aware over here, as in, even on the toilets. I saw, um, like, you know, in the advertising things they have on the urinals. Yeah. I saw one for skin cancer the other day. Yeah. And one for testicular cancer. Really? Getting back to fitness people, like, it's being in tune with your body. I, I think that a lot of the times, um, you know, we, we think, oh, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm healthy. Like I'm able to work out, I mean, well, you know, nothing, you feel like you get that sense of invincibility. Mm. So, so I think it's getting people over that you're invincible feeling like, you know, mm. go to the doctor, get things checked out. Yeah, and p people have um, sent me so many messages about how the stuff I've done helps them. Mm. Um, specifically, like, I think, this, I always remember this one was an older gentleman, probably in his 50s or, or so, middle-aged. Um, read all my posts and he said, yeah, I'm going to go to the doctor. So he, he did and they found something that could have been cancerous. Oh. It wasn't but he went that early. So is it blood tests that you, I mean, what, what would you say go get done? Like, you know, you said obviously give blood because that's pretty much a, like a free blood test, but it, like what, what else do you promote doing? It's mainly about knowing your body, like you said before, like knowing what things feel like and um, what they look like and be able to actually point out this feels different gotcha. like specifically like men's in men's testicles or women's yeah. breast tissue that sort of stuff um which yeah it's isn't talked about enough yeah on yeah. social media what what gets you through you know because we always say people and this is going to be a stretch but people you know 
going to the gym every day is hard. Nothing compared to what you're doing. But if, if you're, you know, I, I think it's the same mentality. Like, you know, the only the only easy day was yesterday. Like, what what would what would you say to people that are, are struggling with things, or even if you know awareness type of stuff? I might just get this done first. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Having about knowing knowing your body, knowing to look out for, being conscious of what your health is and how you can monitor it, and also doing that sort of stuff like blood donations and. Well, sort of brings up help people in my my position because I haven't had a blood turn, a blood transfusion yet, but I'll probably have multiple over the next month. I've probably had the utmost of nearly a hundred blood transfusions. Really? Yeah. So um, and they're all life savings. Because if I didn't have them, my red blood cells would have kept going down, and I would have just passed away from um, just lack of healthy blood cells. Gotcha. Yeah. So blood transfusions are important. Mm. Mm. And I think people need to get over the fact that yeah. I've said it on Snapchat before that they always pull out the I'm scared of needles. Yeah. Whereas I think I always say the pride of actually saving a life should overcome the fear of a, a needle in the arm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For sure. So. so how do you how do you stay positive throughout it all? Like if you, I mean you're you're obviously like you have you're a very strong willed person. You um, you know you've overcame cancer already once. You're going through it again. Like. How do you how do you stay mentally positive through it? Well, I think my whole aspect is that nothing like, you can't benefit from any negative thinking. Uh-huh. So there's no point of being negative at all. You're just, you're just a leader. Yeah, you're you're you're, you're setting the tone. You're mm-hmm. setting the mood for everything. Yeah, because obviously if people were getting themselves checked out much earlier than or much more frequently, I should say, then. Um, this sort of stuff wouldn't happen. Like yeah. you wouldn't need to have these sort of transplants because everyone would be more conscious of their health and they'll be doing more um, preventative care sort of stuff rather than it would take the proactive approach instead of the reactive gotcha. response. Gotcha. Hmm. It's actually one thing I never really thought about. All that preventive, you know, in my mind before it was like you know there's 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 be there you know it's kind of like the luck of the draw. But you're saying it's not you can get it. Get it early enough. Mm. It's a lot. It's a lot uh, more manageable. Yes, yeah. that's true. Yeah, and that's that's probably one of the reasons why I'm still alive today is because of how early we caught it. Uh-huh. And the second time around, I was diagnosed last December, 2015, and we caught it earlier, or early that time as well, because I knew what sort of symptoms to look out for. Like I was, I was um, running out of breath quite easily at the gym, and I was bruising quite easily as well, uh-huh. which is a sign of having low platelets. Um, was led to the same sort of process of going to the doctor to, to get a blood test, um, getting a bone marrow biopsy, which is when they go into the back of my hip to extract some bone marrow tissue. How, how, how painful is that? Um, it's it's kind of hard to explain because they give me sedation, which makes me kind of forget how it is, um, which is probably what the most fun part of it all. <laughs> um, oh, a kite. Being able to pinpoint what symptoms are and how to look out for them was a much easier way of um, bringing a much better prognosis to um, this whole process, I guess. Yeah. I'm pretty transparent, so I'm showing everyone everything. The good, the bad, the ugly, everything. That's right, because if I was just showing them all the sunshine rainbows, everyone would just think it's not that hard. Right. Which, um, it's, which is not right, to be honest. Right. Well, cancer sucks. Mm. And you, you have it on your, on your yeah. chest? Yeah, Where so... I've had three of them so far. The first one I had was down about here. Um, the second one I got out about a month ago was coming yeah. out of my neck. Damn! Um, and then this one's coming out of my chest here. Oh, shit. And you can see the yeah. actual line going up here. Yeah. Yeah. Where's my phone? I want to send these t- these two. My, my good friend's, um, she had her port yeah. in, in the middle of her chest. Mm. Where, where does that go? So, did you want to dump the chemo on the but in the blood, in is the it into the where into the? So uh, obviously this stuff comes into yeah. here. It enters the the chest here, and then is it intramuscular? Is it into an artery? Is it it's into a, it enters the back okay. um, about here, so you can see it. Obviously yeah. there's a little line there. It goes in there, and then it comes I down. I see a big vein, a big vascular. Mm. So <laughs> it comes down to about here. Yeah. So all the chemo stuff goes directly into the. Cool. Just kept a positive mental outlook, and also like. 
they just it puts things in perspective. It's mm-hmm. just like really like what what's important. It, it's it just shifts your whole paradigm, and that's what I think. It just it's bad that it, it takes something that drastic for have it happen to like yeah. like you're saying. It's, it, why can't we start being more aware of things now, or why can't we start being you know to really live here in the now? But I kind of believe is that you don't really appreciate life until you experience yeah. death. I'm gonna make sure that I follow you on Instagram because I pulled you up. Get an off night tonight. <laughs> Our first off night in a while. Sean's birthday. It's my birthday. Today. Today. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Should I just stand here? It's up to you, man. Yeah. It's up to you. Yeah. I think it's pretty cool too. It's like a hashtag. Are you using a hashtag at all? Like, uh, we'll, uh, we'll link the crap out of the same on this segment yeah. too. Yeah. We'll get some popular with the million. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I, I write, um, I kind of created the hashtag soon to be cancer. Well, I saw that on there. Yeah. yeah. That's, in the, that's in your profile. Too, right? Yeah. Cool. We'll check that out. All right, mate. Appreciate you. Thanks for coming, guy. Sure. Good luck tomorrow. Photo you and James. Oh, sorry. Yeah, of course. See, see if the nurse can just pop an amino energy in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? And if, just and, single skip, you'll be fine. And let's, we'll, taking that in one step further, can we get these for the expo with amino yes. energy IVs? <laughs> I'll, just, I'll be walking around the expo with this yeah. thing. It's <laughs> dark. Well, what a day. <clears throat> Today started off really, really rough and um, it ended really well. So. I'm just going to go over the whole day as to how it all panned out because it was pretty surreal as it, as, as it was all happening. So basically, over the, over the last night, I had a fever from one of the drugs they gave me, which is pretty standard stuff because it's known to do that um, when that drug is, is administered. So that was all annoying whilst it was happening, but... In the grand scheme of things, it was even worse because it kind of made me feel pretty bad in the morning due to sleep deprivation and um, still recovering from that headache and a fever from the last night. So I woke up this morning <clears throat> about 5.30, just totally exhausted. Like the sleep had done nothing. I probably only had like two hours sleep in total anyway. And I had a really puffy face from water retention because they're still puff. they're still... um pumping water into me, uh, a litre of water into my blood, into my vein, every four hours, plus whatever I'm drinking through my mouth. So it's a lot of water and it's making my, my kidneys go like overdrive right now. And when I woke up this morning, I, I could feel myself puffy and it kind of kind of ruined my like my confident confidence in self because it's my face and it kind of made me feel a bit lackluster so I kind of hid away hid away from the nurses so that they didn't like I don't know it's very 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 strange thinking of mine but um I was just totally exhausted and from about 5 a.m I kind of slept on and off throughout doctors and nurses coming in to check on me um but I could just basically not even keep my eyes open because they were so puffy and so tired <clears throat> and my mum came in here around 10 10 I believe and then she was just here whilst I was still pretty crook and this whole time she was trying to um get me into get me to have a shower and get me out of bed she knew in her mind that there was this grand scheme of things unfolding, which I had nothing to, no clue about at the time. So yeah, went and had a shower and and it did perk me up a bit. It um, kind of woke me up and my eyes weren't always staying closed. So I was more awake. However, I I had a a chat with a dietitian for about 20 minutes and then my mum left that, that chat about halfway through and I didn't really notice her leaving. Then the dietitian left and about two minutes later, my mum returned with someone who I 
intend to work with. His name is Paul, who um, works alongside Optimum Nutrition. Um, because obviously, I haven't even mentioned this on video, I don't believe that um, late last year I was had connections with Optimum Nutrition to do to work with them as a brand ambassador. However, um, my relapse has put that on hold until I get better again, and then um, I believe it will start again. So Paul lives up here in Melbourne, um, and he was going to visit me regardless of whatever date it was. But it just so happens that my bone marrow transplant falls on the same week as the Arnold Classic in Australia. So basically every fitness personality that I follow is down in Australia at this time. So I was very surprised to actually just meet uh, meet Paul again. But um, I just thought it was going to be that. And you can see from the videos, I was very shocked at um, even his arrival. And then obviously the grand re reveal of Steve and um, Sean coming into the room as well. They also brought Chandler, who was the, um, their filmer for the day. We did lots of filming, which obviously you've seen previously. And most likely it's already on Steve's channel if he's uploaded it. They put up um, an immunosuppressant drug for me, which a pre-medication for that is a couple of things that make me a bit drowsy or a bit slow or a bit like, I've kind of, I wouldn't say hallucinate, hallucinogens, hallucinate before, but um, it kind of just makes me mumble and have a much slower brain complex for about two hours after I have it. So they literally put that drug in me called Phenergan into my system about five minutes before Steve and Sean got here. So I was like totally like just mellow and pretty much just whacked, <laughs> whacked out of this sedation drug whilst they came in here. So I was trying very hard to not, to sound cognitive like I didn't want to mumble because obviously they filmed and we did like a, a, a part interview sort of thing as well. So um, hopefully I haven't made a fool of myself through that via my mumbling, but hopefully this video here is a kind of a bit of a disclaimer as to why that is occurring. Um, and there, yeah, we, sh we shared some things there, obviously going to the Arnold Classic this weekend. We I believe that meeting him, meeting him and having this whole sort of thing was a really nice experience. And really, it really uplifted me in, in this kind of crappy day I was having in this, with the morning, especially with that kind of self-consciousness I had with, with my face, which thankfully kind of, which thankfully lessened by the time they got here. Um, but yeah, having that visit today kind of made me realize that I can, I can be do, I can do what they do. I, I can, or I could do what they do when, once the time comes, like maybe if I didn't get sick this year, I could have been helping at the Arnold Classic this year, or hopefully when I'm recovered and well and back and fit and healthy, maybe next year I can go to the Arnold Classic and help um, Optimum Nutrition um, function their booth, something like that. But it really got the wheels turning as to like what I'm thinking about the future and how prospective it may be. So yeah, it was a really good um, experience. And I am very thankful for them to even stop by or even consider stopping by. One thing was that it was even Sean Stafford's birthday. So he came in to spend time with me in a hospital room on his birthday. So that was a special thing for him to do regardless. Yeah, it was just a really great experience and I'm so thankful to everyone who was in, involved. Paul, Renee, Mum, and of course the two guys, Steve and Sean, and also Chandler who came along for the filming as well. So, mm. but stay tuned because the best is still yet to come. Tomorrow is my bone marrow transplant and I'm keen to be reborn as a new person, essentially. But you have to tune into the next video to find that out. So thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next video.